Hello, I'm sitting this evening with a very big ash tree and uh, it's kind of uh, kind of hard to show how big this ash tree is, but look at that. It's beautiful and I love ash trees and they're like, crows love ash trees too. You, you'll find that if you spend time with ash trees that crows dinner. Um, I know that's the ancient Norse uh, association, Yggdrasil. I always think uh, that kind of crow is associated with that mythology. Um, but the ash is one of the biggest trees in the UK. And I'm sitting here in Wales this evening. Um, there's a lot of ash trees in Wales. There's a lot of oak trees, a lot of beech trees. You know, there's really deciduous giants of the woods. This one's in a hedgerow. It's really craggy and old. And uh, it's just lovely here this evening. I want to talk about ash because it's one of the trees that is um, suffering from a blight, so you'll see a lot of ash trees are being cut down. It's one of our really strong trees. Um, over the years I've meditated with this tree and spent time with the ash. It brings up some really interesting uh, feelings. And if you look up the meaning of ash tree, so all trees are associated with some kind of healing property. So the ash is associated with balance and oneness. So it's like the male, female, sun, moon, dark light, day and night, and how everything becomes one. It's a bit like the yin yang is part of the, you know, the division between the, the oneness and you have to have the both. You can't have one without the other. But when you sit with the ash tree, it, it brings a sense of balance within. If any of you ever meditate with trees, you know what I'm talking about. You just get it as a feeling or something that starts to manifest or you feel as a vision inside. It's very interesting. I try not to get, to get bitten by mites because there's a few mites around this evening. It's a typical early September day. I oh, actually coming into night now as well. The ash is associated with a lot of mythology. I mentioned Norse mythology. So the tree Yggdrasil in Norse mythology was meant to be or supposed to be an ash tree and Odin hung himself from this for three days to gain enlightenment. Trees figure a lot in stories about enlightenment. And you can see why, because when you look at something that's this old, craggy, you know, it makes you think, how does it last that long? How does it grow from something so small as a seed and become this big? It's incredible. So trees impart a sense of strength. The ash tree was seen as an axis mundi, the tree of life. So the axis mundi is when you have the roots in the earth, and then you have sort of the pillar, which is the life on earth, the trunk. And then you have the branches reaching up towards the heavens. And that was basically to see, you know, the cosmic tree of life. And that would teach us about our time here on earth, to be of the earth, but to be spirit as well. And the ash gets such a great size, if it's let grow, that you feel that by its stature. The wood was used as protective uh, wood. So if you found an ash staff, you could place that by your bed and it'd give you protection. The Vikings in days past were seen to carry the ash, a piece of ash on their sea, uh, sea journeys because it would give them protection and strength. You know, people in the past really revered trees because they saw them as sacred beings. They saw them as being protective and they saw them as bringing luck and giving that sense of strength. Because when you look at this, you think, this tree is like covered in moss, it's all craggy, you know, it's grown bits everywhere. You think, well, if this can survive, well, I could survive too. It wards off negativity and evil spirits. To carry around ash is a sting of strength. The Vikings were known as the Eastlings, the men of ash. I really like that, you know. I know they did a lot of plundering, but, you know, they, they were in touch with, you know, elements that has long been forgotten, I feel of how much we are connected to the natural world. And these mighty beings really do give that sense of strength. You can eat ash leaves. When they're young, you can put them into salads. You can put them in a tea. They're astringent and they're laxative. They're good for things like gout, arthritis, constipation, fevers. Most trees have a healing element to their bark and leaves. You just have to investigate it and make sure it works for you whenever you try anything. I love the ash tree. <laughs> I love just sitting here and listening to the birds sing in the evening. I feel a sense of protection just for being here. And that's all I had to do was just come and sit here. 
If you could find an ash tree, a big old ash tree, go and spend some time. They are really beautiful. And uh, we can engage with them in ways that uh, maybe we'll kind of seek back to our ancestry and understand why we connected so much with these trees for our well-being. Wishing you a really, really nice day, evening, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.